I just watched the documentary introducing Selma Blair about the actor Selma Blair and her battle with multiple sclerosis and her recovery after a hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And I want to talk about this documentary. I'll kind of give my review and some comments from the perspective of a neurologist. And I also happen to know a few of the people in the documentary coincidentally, including Dr. Richard Burt, who is the hematologist who performed the hematopoietic stem cell transplant and one of her neurologists in Los Angeles. Dr. Regina Berkovich, who happens to be my former fellowship mentor at USC. So anyways, there are going to be spoilers in this, although I don't think it would take away your enjoyment of watching the documentary. If you want to check it out, it's on Discovery Plus, which is a streaming service. I have a link in the description below. They do offer a free seven-day trial, and you can cancel afterwards if you don't want the service. So definitely check it out. I think it's worth watching if you're interested in Selma Blair or interested in the topic in general. Now, if you don't know who Selma Blair is, she's quite famous. She's an actor and she's been around for decades. She's been in movies such as Legally Blonde and the Hellboy series. She's never won an Oscar, but she's quite prominent and has a lot of credits to her name. And, you know, I got to give her a lot of credit for really putting herself out there. This is a very real and raw documentary. And it starts off showing her at her very worst, at her nadir, when her symptoms are maximal. And you can see she's quite imbalanced and she's walking with a cane. She has a very severely strained voice, a speech disorder known as spastic dysphonia. And you can also see that she has some paralysis of the right side of her face and weakness of the right side of her body and is having great difficulty walking. And she retrospectively believes she's had MS for a very long time. She believes she was doing a fashion show in the 1980s and she was on the runway and she felt like her right leg was falling to the ground more heavily than normal, as though she had a little bit of weakness. And some people with MS, they can have this inducible fatiguing weakness where they feel strong, but maybe after exerting themselves, they start to feel the weakness. And the nature of relapsing MS is that people can get better spontaneously. So she probably had a mild relapse, improved over time, and never had a second thought about it. But retrospectively, she probably had some other symptoms later on. She describes that she had some symptoms after the birth of her son, Arthur, who's now 10 years old. And she may have had some subtle symptoms like fatigue and other things. And maybe doctors originally thought it was depression because maybe the symptoms were not so specific. But later on, uh, in June 2018, she had some difficulty writing. And a few months later, in August 2018, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and she was very open about her diagnosis and she revealed it on Instagram two months later in October 2018 and then the following year in 2019 at age 47 she underwent hematopoietic stem cell transplant. So first a few of my general thoughts about the documentary. Like I said, it's very real and raw. I think some people who are a little bit more squeamish might not like the fact that it shows disability so vividly, maybe not appropriate for young children. But I think it's really important for people to see that. And, you know, she really films herself at her worst. There's even a little bit of nudity in the documentary, which is kind of unnecessary, but maybe it makes the point like I have such severe problems. I don't even care if someone's filming me while I'm changing, that kind of thing. She's very humorous and in good spirit. She has a lot of self-depreciating humor. She talks about how she wants a good-looking cane. It has to be an attractive cane. She says she had a lot of muscle spasms and tension, and so she went to get a massager but got the wrong type of massager, if you know what I'm saying, and a few other self-depreciating things. She's very open about some of the problems in her life, particularly the conflict that she had with her mother. Apparently, her mother was very mean and disapproving and had a lot of rage to her, and nothing was really ever good enough for her mother. And they even film a conversation she has with her mother, who actually now has a lot of neurological problems and likely has dementia based on the nature of the conversation. So you may not have realized it seeing Selma Blair, given that she's successful, famous, rich, whatever, but she really had a lot of problems in her life. She's been through a divorce and breakups, and she has joint custody of her son with her ex. Even though she had a relatively good life overall, she had a lot of problems that many of us didn't know about. So anyways, you know, one thing I want to say is that her multiple sclerosis was very aggressive. One thing that Dr. Richard Burt said in the documentary is that you know, MS inevitably progresses on standard treatments. But that's not really true. A lot of people in the modern era, particularly 
do quite well with MS. It's just that the type of patients that go to see Dr. Burt are those who have essentially failed traditional therapy. So he has a little bit of a biased perspective. There was actually a study done at University of California, San Francisco, and they found that for people with relapsing MS after 10 years, only 4.7% were even using a cane. And after 20 years, it was 16.2%. And so for Selma Blair to be using a cane within months after her diagnosis is certainly the minority, though of course she's likely had MS for a very long time. I should also say that for people with progressive MS, a form of MS where people are slowly progressing, the prognosis is somewhat worse. Now anyways, she originally was on a treatment that was reported to be a once a month treatment. This is likely the drug Tysabri or natalizumab that is given in the infusion center, and it is one of the stronger multiple sclerosis drugs, and if she was reportedly still getting worse on this treatment. So in a sense, she was a very good candidate for hematopoietic stem cell transplant. She's relatively young, presumably healthy with not a lot of other medical conditions. She has relapsing multiple sclerosis, and she tried a standard treatment, and it didn't work for her. So in a sense, she was really the best candidate for this treatment. So what is stem cell transplant? Now, by the way, I'm not trying to fault the producers of the documentary. I think they did a great job overall, but there are a few things that are confusing or at least not clear in the documentary. So in reality, it's not actually a stem cell treatment. The actual treatment that causes improvement is the chemotherapy. And the treatment she received, they describe as being cyclophosphamide or cytoxan. In reality, what Dr. Burt typically uses is cytoxan plus ATG antithymocyte globulin. And they use very high doses of this drug cytoxan. And cytoxan is a chemotherapy drug that targets immune cells, though it can also cause some collateral damage to other rapidly dividing cells, and that's why it can cause hair loss. Now, cytoxan is actually used by neurologists to treat multiple sclerosis. I prescribed it many times. Just coincidentally, on the day I'm filming this, I actually prescribed cyclophosphamide to one of my patients with an autoimmune disease of the nervous system, not multiple sclerosis. But if this is a drug that is used in standard care. So there's sort of this sense that hematopoietic stem cell transplant is sort of different from standard therapies. That's not exactly true. However, they use a much stronger dose that people cannot tolerate. And if you have no immune system, the risk of infections is very, very high, and that's why they give you the stem cells. So it's an autologous stem cell transplant, meaning they're giving you your own stem cells, and it's hepatopoietic, meaning they're bone marrow-derived stem cells, not mesenchymal stem cells. So these are not stem cells that grow nerve tissue. So in the documentary, they depict this treatment as being very effective, but somewhat risky. And this is true, and it's actually not quite as risky as is depicted in the documentary. They describe that there's a very high rate of mortality historically when they first used this treatment over 40 years ago for MS. But now the mortality rate is much lower. It used to be around 5%. Now with certain regimens, it's actually less than 0.5%. So it's not nearly as risky. However, you know, she talks about how she apparently knew someone who had died of infection shortly after receiving the transplant, more like she knew someone that knew someone, so she was afraid that she would die of complications, but she wanted to go forward with it because MS was so debilitating for her. The other thing that's not clear in the documentary is they kind of depict stem cell transplant as a single treatment. In reality, it's multiple different treatments because there are multiple different chemotherapy or conditioning regimens. She likely receives cyclophosphamide plus antithymocyte globulin. Interestingly, that's not the most effective regimen. There was an excellent study done in Italy, and I have a link above if you want to check out this study, uh, showing that BEAM, a multidrug chemotherapy regimen, is probably even more effective than cytoxan plus ATG. Now, what is the benefit of getting hematopoietic stem cell transplant? One, it's very effective. I made a video comparing different regimens, and I think hematopoietic stem cell transplant is likely the most effective treatment in MS. However, it is quite risky. The side effects of cytoxan, in addition to short time, term things such as like pain and nausea and upset stomach and hair loss, it can weaken the immune system and increase the risk of infections. There is a risk of inflammation of the bladder and even bleeding known as hemorrhagic cystitis and a small risk of future bladder cancer and even 
future other hematologic malignancies and probably not a concern for her infertility. So why isn't this used more often in MS? It's not exactly known. One reason certainly could be marketing. Cytoxan is an old, cheap drug. No one really stands to make a lot of money on it, and so no one's really promoting it like the newer multiple sclerosis drugs. The other thing is that it's risky. You know, a lot of people, if they're doing well on standard treatments, which many are, they wouldn't want to take the risk of this type of treatment, particularly a young woman who wants to have children and who has many years of life in front of her. So it's kind of a little bit different than what's depicted in the documentary. They also kind of imply that it's sort of a weird or experimental treatment. That's not exactly true. There are many published studies. It's been around for a long time. It is an established effective treatment in MS. It's just fairly risky and has a lot of potential side effects, but it's definitely a legitimate treatment of MS. Now, one of the other benefits of hematopoietic stem cell transplant is there's the potential for long-term remission. So with a lot of MS drugs, they work very well. They're very good at preventing relapses and new MRI lesions. But if you stop the medication, the disease can come back later on. Whereas with hematopoietic stem cell transplant, usually no future treatments would be given unless there is return of disease activity. Now, I've had many patients receive these treatments. Uh, some have done well. Some have received it from Dr. Burt himself. I've had a few patients go to Mexico to receive a similar treatment. Of course, I've also had patients who have gotten significantly worse after the treatment. It's just a mixed bag. It's definitely far from 100% effective. But the good news is many people do improve and experience long-term remission, and they tend to improve specifically if they've had recent relapses. Now, could Selma Blair have improved if she had received another treatment, let's say lower-dose cytoxan, like what I'm giving to my patient? It's hard to say. No one really knows. But the point is, she was very sick. She was hospitalized for 19 days. She was in a lot of pain, very fatigued, had a lot of throat pain. But she then started to slowly improve. And she actually got to the point where she could walk independently without a cane. Her speech was much better. They even show her free climbing a rock wall, which was very impressive. Now, at the end of the documentary, she expresses a little bit of disappointment, uh, saying she had wished she improved more. She still has some imbalance, maybe still uses a cane sometimes, still has some issues with slurred speech, maybe still has some of the subtle symptoms of MS like fatigue, which can be quite disabling. So she was a little bit disappointed that she didn't improve more, but she did have a very significant improvement. Now, Dr. Burt says in the documentary that often people improve slowly over a period of two years before they achieve their best function. And this is, in fact, consistent with my experience and with other high-efficacy multiple sclerosis drugs. So she still could be improving more and more, and hopefully she is. Now, a few things, sort of random coincidences. Like I said, I kind of know Dr. Burt. Not really. I talked to him on the phone one time about a patient. I followed a lot of his research over the years. So he's a nice guy, not a charlatan. He's not getting paid to perform the treatment or anything like that. He's on salary from the university. He's from Northwestern. And so he doesn't have some kind of conflict of interest. He's just a proponent of these treatments. And he's done it many for many years, and he has a lot of experience with it, and he's very well known for it. Uh, the other person I know is Dr. Regina Berkovich. She's a neurologist in Los Angeles. And like I said, she was my former mentor. And apparently Selma Blair, perhaps somewhat disappointed that she didn't recover even more than she did, and I think she had a fairly good recovery. She, Dr. Berkovich apparently noted that she had some gray matter injury on her MRI scan, and that may be sort of the explanation for why she didn't improve more than she did. Gray matter is the part of the brain where the cells are. Historically, we used to think of multiple sclerosis as a white matter disease only affecting the myelin or the fatty sheath of the nerve fibers, but it does also affect the gray matter. And so that's not really unsurprising, but maybe it explains that she has some amount of injury that's sort of irreversible to the nervous system. I don't know. Anyways, Dr. Berkovich is certainly very qualified and I would trust her opinion. The other thing is there was a random coincidence where when she got the hematopoietic stem cell transplant, she had an ex-boyfriend who tried to take who took care of her for a little bit, I think because he lived in the area, whose name was David Lyons. And I actually interviewed another David Lyons who's a fitness expert in MS who himself has multiple sclerosis. You can check out that interview here. Total coincidence, just the same name. 
uh, different person entirely. But anyways, I enjoyed the documentary overall. I think it was really real and raw, and I give her a ton of credit. I hope that she continues to improve. She kind of expressed that she was a little bit reluctant to return to work as an actor. I really hope that she does. I think she has a lot of talent. I enjoyed some of her movies. I actually watched Legally Blonde again not too long ago, which I definitely enjoyed. And so she, hopefully she returns to acting or maybe does something else that she's passionate about and goes on to enjoy life. And hopefully she has minimal problems going forward with MS. But I'd be interested to know, do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts of the documentary? Did you see it? Did you enjoy it? Would you recommend it to other people? And do you have any suggestions for future videos?